my name is Fraser Simons. This is my channel, Springboard Thought. Today I'm doing another recent read. Back to that after the Booker content is now complete. The last thing will be um, the announcement of the winner. So we'll see. With the short list that was announced, I'm not sure I care too much, but we'll see. The first book I'm going to talk about is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Um, this is my first Bronte ever. Uh, of any of them and so I went in with pretty high expectations which might have been a bad idea but uh, I gave this book three stars to get that out of the way uh, it traces the sort of revenge of an abused child who grows up and is all consumed with that uh, emotion and his only drive basically is to get even um, and he makes people's lives a mystery, um, a misery, I should say, uh, across two generations, and then we see how that plays out. It is very gothic, it's very Victorian, uh, it is moody, pretty surprisingly cerebral with the um, prose work, which I appreciated quite a bit. I thought it was very clever at giving out information depending on who the viewer is, because it changes, although it mostly stays with the nanny of a particular household. Uh, there's class differences as well that are uh, pretty starkly drawn. There's basically the haves and the haves nots, and they're uh, the only two properties that are ever brought into the story, so you will know um, who gets to sort of pass and who doesn't, what abuse does to a person. All that kind of stuff feels very progressive for the times in which it was written, which I really appreciated. But it's also so highly melodramatic all of the time and so extra all of the time that it has a smoothing out effect for me, which melodrama always pretty much does. Uh, if everything is so big and go home about everything, then when there are really huge moments, they tend to just be sort of ripples in a pond that's already turbulent waters. And that's what this felt like. Um, there was a lot of eye roll kind of worthy moments. It felt very like YA in some <laughs> interactions where they're talking past each other, but not to each other. Um, however, the symbolism woven throughout it and the meta component really work. I think it's just the concrete level that I have an issue with. Um, and I read this kind of at the same time as uh, Kim from Middle of the Book March, but um, I read it quicker and didn't kind of do the follow along with the, the, the um, videos that she was producing at the time because I just didn't have the energy. But I did participate because of that. <laughs> Next, I read People Change by Vivek Shraya, narrated by the author. This was a four-star read. It's another sort of really small essayist kind of collection that hit home for me. Um, and it's, yeah, to the point and then exceeded my expectations. So exactly what you'd expect from the title. There's a sort of rumination on the topic as it relates to her queerness and her at different aspects of her identity and it's like a maybe one hour if that maybe two hour um, novella type situation very quick get in get out I think you'd either sort of like agree or disagree but she raises enough points that I think you'll come away with it at least thinking about the topics which is basically what I look for from that stuff uh, I then read Anything is Possible and O. William by Elizabeth Strout. I've talked about O. William already, um, and I think Anything is Possible somewhat on my Booker videos, but Anything is Possible is a short story collection set in the Lucy Barton world, um, and O. William's a follow-up to that. There's three books in the series, a forthcoming one is um, arriving this year, I think. And the uh, O. William is now shortlisted and I'm pretty happy about that. I thought O. William was a five-star read. It does what the first two books, I Am Lucy Barton and um, Anything Is Possible, attempt to do with the intersections of poverty, um, of class, of abuse, 
uh, from the perspective of like a kind of annoying but somehow endearing over the hill sort of aged person who is like a little bit out of touch with social norms and a little bit different and kooky and off kilter I guess just because of her upbringing um, and that will either work for some people or it won't I basically think but if you're really into the first two books and you want to know if you should continue with the third book a William in which uh, she's quite a bit older and she's ruminating on William her ex-husband uh, and a trip that they once take and how that ties back into a bunch of different stuff from the first two books I think you should because it is absolutely the most best I guess expression of what she is trying to do with those books like it feels like a home run to me exactly what she keeps kind of trying for and missing somewhat in the first two books and it's endearing in her attempting to connect with those things it doesn't feel fully fleshed out whereas Lucy seems to have grown in herself as Strode has grown as an author um, and I, I just liked everything about the book basically it was a five-star read anything is possible is a four-star read it still exceeded my expectations I still liked it quite a bit um, I then read Paris Stories by Mavis Gallant this is a short story collection in which, like always, uh, I retained very little of the short stories. I just kind of uh, condense everything into an overall feeling. Uh, in this case, it was a four-star collection, which is better than most short story collections that I read. Usually they get drummed down to a three, kind of does what it says on the tin. I can't recall anything very specific. Um, yeah, this though I feel the writing elevates it I felt even the lowest stories were above grade um, not everybody uh, as you might think is actually in Paris <laughs> um, and she is an expat from uh, Canada by the way Gall Gallant um, and it is very hard to summarize everything because it is so eclectic but I would say if you're interested in slow not concerned with plot um, heavy characterization social economic political issues imbued in ideologue short story characters then you should pick it up because it is the best that i've consumed at doing that next i read a book from corona zamazat samazat hopefully i'm saying that right a small indie publisher in slovenia um, this is Purple West by Jonathan Trosclair. Um, this is a fantastic book. I gave it five stars. Um, it is somewhat satirical in nature with the voice. It's sci-fi, 10 seconds in the future kind of deal. And it is very, I would say, more literary minded than genre fiction. You're not going to get the implications of the cyberpunk aesthetic in which People are just trying to live their lives. There's a riot in the city um, that's breaking out. She works at a mega corporation that doesn't realize, she works at a corporation that doesn't realize that the umbrella is a mega corporation. Essentially, there are many layers above hers, even though this company ostensibly thinks it's like a big dog um, and purports to be one. It is actually an extension of something that even it doesn't realize what it is, which is very cyberpunk. Um, and she gets caught up into a plot in which they want her to be complicit. A building is being constructed. There are accidents occurring. Weird things are happening. Her former friend is a, her boss and he gets laid off when she takes a call that he was supposed to and navigates it better than she did. Um, and then it becomes a weird cat and mouse um, omnipresence thing in which she is trying to figure out what's going on half of the mm, at least a third of the book I think is her actually getting from a point A to a point B in the city uh, when she has chosen her kind of allegiance I guess or trying to figure out more about what is happening um, and deviates from her like given mission basically uh, and it's just navigating a riot in a very real visceral um, realistic highly realistic way like it 
feels like Charles Claire has either been at riots that have erupted in this way or researched them. It goes into a lot of political machinations about how, you know, the stuff that happened at the George Floyd um, uh, BLM stuff where police insurgency happens, uh, a whole bunch of different dynamics, crowd dynamics, madness of crowds type situation. Um, and it's just her trying to get from point A to point B, like I was saying, in a um, Uber, basically. It's basically a situation like that. Some company is choosing to um, still continue its services and the guy who is driving has to deploy all of his knowledge of the city and the actual factions at play. And so there's like an interesting in medias res type thing playing out in which you're discovering the political, I don't know, the political um, inaction of the city, but it feels so frenetic and visceral because it's happening to her in that moment. And the entire time you're thinking all she wants to do is have like a 30 minute ride to a point where you know, unfortunately, the riots have interrupted um, and the complications that ensue spiral into the end of the book. Uh, she's not very good at interpersonal skills. There are some communication issue, obstacle problems that I am not, it's not my favorite um, to have in these kind of, um, well, in any text really, but especially in something that feels like it should be uh, reaching a climax that hits the brakes, which is why this is very literary. It's like not concerned with your expectations whatsoever. Um, but then it, it proves to be very intellectual, cerebral, up to the task of providing a very different experience in a different way in a post cyberpunk reaction to uh, the initial cyberpunk movement. And I think it's highly effective and great. They have these little pocket editions, so it's cheaper ostensibly, I guess, to ship and manufacture. Um, you should check out the website um, and check out the book if you want to. I remember getting four or five books with way cheaper shipping than uh, is available even domestically in Canada. So, And then the last book that I want to talk about is Beneath a Scarlet Sky by Mark T. Sullivan. This is a quick one. I gave it one star. I hated it. Uh, it is a book in which a spy or something is recounting his years uh, looking back in Italy during World War II maybe. Don't know which war it is. I made it 30-40 pages into it and it was very clear that the writing was not up to par. Uh, I guess it's a self-published sort of marvel that has come about. It's for some people, not for me. Uh, the perspective was broken. It didn't actually work. The language didn't make sense. It felt very contrived off the bat and I just didn't care what it was going. There was a introduction that was, or there was something that should have been an introduction, but instead it was the uh, prologue, but it was the author talking to you, like the ostensible author, I, I guess, of this, this book, talking about why he wrote the book. And then it segues into the actual text and it's basically just a device in which he's saying this is a story that is told to me and so I can use the third person but I'm also taking liberties peppering in um, things that I think might have happened but that perspective break is so present all of the time that it makes everything feel completely unreal and foolish <laughs> like it just it, it just does not sell itself whatsoever um, so I just put it down and that was this week's Week in Reading. I'll be putting these out probably two a week going forward because I have quite a few to catch up on with the Booker stuff being done. So you're actually seeing a backlog of my books. Um, if you're on my Goodreads or on my Storygraph, you kind of know where I'm at. I'm probably like, I'm guessing 30 or 40 books ahead of this spot at the moment. So we've got, um, we've got time to catch up. As always, looking forward to your comments. Hope you're doing well, hope you're healthy, hope you're not caught in a heat wave, and um, I will talk to you later.
Bye.